Hi friends, how are you all? Hope you are doing great. Welcome to my channel, Nature at the Very Core of Science. From the title of the video, you must have guessed that we are going to talk about BT corn and monarch butterflies. Do they ring any bells? No? Don't worry, we will cover everything little by little. The interesting topic of today is the debates generated surrounding the effect of BT corn on the monarch butterflies. But before doing so, let me ask you a question. Don't get nervous, it's an easy one. Do you feel that the scientists are very shy? They do not argue much to contradict others? What did you say? Yes? No, 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 not at all. When time arrives, they participate in debates with great enthusiasm and are armed with all their gadgets, which obviously are their experimental data, most powerful ones though, and they do not give up without winning. Don't you believe me? Okay, you will find out that too from today's story. So are we ready? Okay, let's begin. For a long time, the corn crop was destroyed by the larvae and caterpillars of insects, which feed on them. So to prevent the economic loss, the farmers were using a significant amount of hazardous insecticides, which in turn led to environmental pollution. So to tackle the problems, the scientists wanted to genetically manipulate the corn plant. You might ask how? They were determined to introduce a specific bacterial gene into the corn plant. For this purpose, they selected a gene of the soil bacterium Bacillus thuringiensis, which in short is called the Bt gene. Now, you may be curious to know why particularly this gene was chosen. The answer is this, that the gene produces delta endotoxin protein which is insecticidal in nature and thus when expressed in corn can control corn borers, corn rootworms and other major pests of corn. <laughs> Bingo! The plan worked and the modified corn can now produce Bt proteins and can kill the insects and thus helping the economy. So these corn types are named Bt corn. Since Bt corn offers an alternative to spraying chemical insecticides, its use certainly can reduce the use of pesticides in the fields and thus has an environmental benefit. There are no known effects to mammals, fish or birds and they appear safe for consumers. All well and good, but since the approval of the first BT corn in 1996, the critics were suggesting that it also can destroy beneficial insects or other non-targeted organisms and then can even lead to a wholly new kind of environmental pollution. And amongst them was Cornell University entomologist John Losey. So in the summer of 1999, Losey sparked a worldwide controversy with the publication of a short paper in the scientific journal Nature, indeed a very, you know, p prestigious journal, reporting his laboratory findings that monarch butterfly larvae died after eating the milkweed plants dusted with pollen from Bt corn. The experimental design was like that. Uh, Losi and his colleagues divided the monarch caterpillars into two groups based on their diet. One group fed the familiar unmodified corn pollinated milkweed and the other that is Bt corn or GMO corn pollinated milkweed. You might wonder what is a milkweed plant and why, what is the implication of milkweed plants in Losi's experiment. Well, the milkweed is a type of shrub, the nectar of its flower is very favorite for bees, butterflies and other pollinating insects. And incidentally, monarch caterpillars feed exclusively on milkweed leaves. Without milkweed, the larva wouldn't be able to develop into a butterfly. Back to the experimental result, the researchers observed that the mortality rate of the second group of larvae, that means the Bt corn group, was significantly higher than that of the first class, that means unmodified. By the way, have you seen a monarch? Oh, they look gorgeous. Bright orange wings covered with black veins and rimmed with a black border and white dots. Flamboyant markings. 
Monarchs uh, mainly live in North, Central and South America as well as in Australia, though some are found in some Pacific Islands, India and Western Europe. Monarchs are great pollinators. When they move from flower to flower in search of nectar, their bodies collect pollen and carry it to other plants. This helps fruits, vegetables and flowers to produce new seeds. Let me share with you another very interesting fact about monarchs. They are great travelers. Each fall, North American monarchs travel from their summer breeding grounds to overwintering locations. So east of the Rocky Mountain, monarchs travel up to an astonishing 3000 miles to central Mexico, whereas the shorter migration, that means the west of the Rocky is to the California coast. A migrating monarch can fly up to 2,500 or sometimes even 3,000 total miles before reaching its destination. In a single day, a monarch can travel over 100 miles with the right conditions. They coast on air current to move quickly and conserve energy. Incredible, isn't it? To the Losi Group's report again. You can understand how disturbing the whole thing was. If the larvae are killed, then the invaluable services of monarchs to many ecosystems will be affected. Following this sensational report by Losi's group, Iowa State University's scientists Laura Hansel and John uh, Obriski, they also published in 2000, proudly announcing that the pollen of Bt corn is particularly harmful to monarchs even at a very normal level. Well. Now the argument started. Some other researchers argued that the excess pollen used by Losi's group in their experiments was unrealistic and that is the cause of some non-specific effects. But in reality the Bt protein is very selective, generally not harming insects in other orders such as beetles, flies, bees and wasps. Moreover, according to the migratory pattern of monarchs, there is absolutely no question of their arrival near the field, corn field, when the pollination of Bt corn happens, because the two periods are distinctly different and apart. So what else after this? Over the next two years, six groups of scientists from all sectors, government, university and industry joined in search of a thorough theory. Ultimately, Sears and colleagues, they concluded in 2001 that the risk of monarch damage from Bt corn was negligible. Now, the United States Environmental Protection Agency or in short EPA, they, their analysis of Bt crops found that uh, there is no significant risk to the environment or to human health by the Bt corn. So, as a result of this, their evidence, EPA maintained the approval of bioengineered Bt corn to control the corn rootworm, that is the main pest, very, you know, nasty pest of corn since 2003 and the use of such Bt corn in the United States has reduced the conventional insecticide use for this rootworm by more than 75 percent. So what do you expect? So you feel that the Bt corn chapter is now closed because everything is solved, but no way. Very recently, USDA Agricultural Research Service ARS, the entomologist Steve Naranjo and his Swiss colleagues again took up the topic <laughs> because they just wanted to make sure that the earlier studies were not were done properly and obviously they found that those were limited in scope, environment or size. So the their paper that means the, these three authors paper they just uh, made up for these shortfalls by systematically pulling together data from studies in 12 bibliographic databases 17 specialized web pages and the reference section of 78 review articles that all made the highest standards for research quality and these three scientists found that this massive aggregation of data showed Bt corn had no negative effects on most invertebrate groups including lady beetles, flower bugs and less wings. Population of braconidae insects which are parasitoid wasps that prey on corn borers were reduced only with Bt corn. 
So they published their data in the Journal uh, of Environmental Evidence in June 2022. Hallelujah. The case is finally resolved. So you see how far the scientists can go to prove one thing beyond any doubt. Hats off to their perseverance. Gracias. Thank you all for listening to the audio. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment. If you like this kind of topics, please subscribe to my channel, Nature at the Very Core of Science. Adios. Bye-bye.